yes. I could not be happier. I finally have my Russian four-wheel drive van off-road in the mountains. This is gonna be an epic, epic off-road excursion slash review. And there's nobody, nobody that can interrupt this moment. Absolutely perfect moment. What? That cannot be. I think that's Mr. Truck. Okay, let's, let's go check. Mr. Truck, is that you? Of course it's me. <laughs> I want to see what this Russian cement colored box with wheels could do. <laughs> it's not cement box. Well, that's the color of it, man. Dude, I, I haven't seen your built up Jeep YJ in person. It's got big tires. <laughs> it's so, got lights, it's got winches, it's got lift, it's got everything. I don't radio though. So it sounds like this is a little bit of a Soviet era four wheel drive van versus true American Wrangler. Yes, and I have lockers. You don't have a chance in hell of beating this Wrangler. <laughs> it's the first Wrangler made, 1987. Cool. Winter is right around the corner. It's almost the end of riding season. And the last thing you want is to brave the cold without any hair on your head. Male pattern baldness affects an average of two out of three guys by the age 35. The best way to keep your hair is by treating it before you lose it. Rather than going to a doctor's office for hair loss products, Keeps lets you consult a licensed doctor online so you can figure out which hair loss plans best suits your needs. After that, your order is shipped directly to your front door. Keeps is an affordable solution to prevent hair loss and a single order lasts you three months. Hundreds of thousands of guys are using Keeps and their reviews say it all. If keeping a full head of hair this winter sounds like a good thing to you, visit keeps.com slash TFL truck or click the link in the description below for 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash TFL truck. Don't let yourself go bald. Stay warm with a full head of hair. So this is quite an odd couple. We have a 1992 UAZ 452 3741. That's the name of this vehicle. A Buhanka van versus this, a 1987 Jeep, right? Yeah, Jeep. It's a 1987 10, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 model. Holy moly. And we're going to take these two up Cliffhanger 1.0 in the mist and in the fog. It's just shaking the shit out of me is all. No, it's just doing fine. We're hitting a few trees. Got a few trees in my mirrors. I imagine you're hitting a lot of trees. I think I trimmed a bunch of them with my roof rack, but uh, here's a small water crossing, so you go first and then I'll follow you. Roger, Dodger. Just engaged four low, uh, four wheel drive, hubs locked. I'm moving forward. Nice. I have to be very careful because this manual steering, it's really uh, kicks back at me sometimes. And I'm scratching trees, no. Oh, this Buhanka, I think it's too big for this trail even. Can't believe it. I thought this was a compact little tiny van. Let's look at your Wrangler. Yes, it's the first year of the Wrangler, 1987. I've got a winch. I can uncover the winch if you really want to see it. But... So tell me the story. Why did you buy it at, at first? Billy Jack. He did a lot of movies. You've probably never heard of him. Okay, Billy Jack. He did CJ5 movies and all his things. He always rescued somebody in karate and all that stuff. And then in one movie, he did a Harvester Scout, International Harvester. But I always wanted a Jeep because of Billy Jack, but I couldn't fit in a CJ5. So I was going to get a CJ7. <laughs> and they're all rust buckets. So this year, the Wrangler, first year of it, is all galvanized steel. There's no rust at all in this thing. I was so tickled. 
And the guy already did what I wanted. I want fuel injection. And he already took out the 4.2 of the carburetor, put in a 4 liter fuel injected inline 6 out of a uh, 1997 Let's Cherokee. See Let's see it, dude. So was it in kind of a rough shape when you first found it? Well, no, he, had, he was like in the middle of a project. He just kind of started doing things and uh, he had it weird around a little while and I knew it wasn't that bad. But the biggest thing was he put a new wiring harness in with the engine, the fuel injection, and he, he instead of wiring it all to the fuse block or the ignition, he wired them all to the battery. So then he was worried about fires. We were having problems. So if you know, over by your fender there, I put a kill switch on it. So if it catches oh. on fire, oh, I yeah. can shut it off. And you that's know what? what that's all about. I also have a kill switch. I've heard that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what this is. And I've got these bright lights of the off-road lights from uh, Light Force. Let's it's, talk about your axles and tires and stuff. Yeah, it's actually in good shape. And of course, it's got flames on. It's got a chrome grill, chrome bumper. So, you know, it had the look. I had to get the look. But this rascal, it's got the hangers on the shackles, which give a little bit of a lift. And I put, these are 33s now, and they're 10, they're 12 and a half wide. And so I, I, I totally have got about a four inch lift. And it's got an Eisen, whatever they are, A15 transmission. Huh? So it's a good, it's not the Peugeot. Is it, is it, is it the five speed or yeah, four? Five speed. Okay. So, Mr. Truck, we finally made it here to Cliffhanger 1.0. And I would say, because both of our vehicles are kind of lifted, they have aggressive tires, that we do the dare side. Which, which one's the dare side? This, this right side. The right side. That's, is that the toughest one? Yes. And the other one's Truce? Yeah. Is this where you ride up on two wheels? I hope not, because I'm a little bit top heavy. So I think you should go first and show me how it's done. I should go first. <laughs> I've never been here before. I should go first. They're going up truth, and we're not, because we are we're men, and we're going up the dare side. Man, this Jeep's too tall. Why does anybody lift a truck? I don't understand it. Second gear, and we're bouncing along. Holy cow, we're going sideways? Oh, you cheaper. Holy cow, now we're getting the front end off the ground. Whoa, whoop, hip. Oh, we're going to drop into a hole. Whoop, 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 it's the cameraman. Just ran over the cameraman. Hope it's okay. Holy cow, oh my gosh. Now we're climbing over logs and trees. And holy cow. I'm bouncing all over. Oh, I'm gonna find a place to land somewhere. Holy cow. Oh Lord. That was fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> so here's a new seat, new steering wheel. And you can see the dash. The other guy put the dash in. And we wired it all up. And Ruben, so, my mechanic, fixed it all up so it's drivable, it's dependable now. So wait, you said you have lockers? Yes. And disc brakes? He put, uh, this had like 307 axles, which is not good for axle ratios. So I had him put four tens, and then he put a full locker Spartan in the back. So in four-wheel drive, it kicks in and stays kicked in. And in the front's got a limited slip spicer. And then on the back, which you, I don't know if you can see the axles way underneath there. Well, we'll show it. Yeah. This has a Ford Explorer 8.8 .8 rear end. He replaced that 35 Dana, which is this is much stronger. He welded the axle tubes to the pumpkin. And now it's, it's got disc brakes off the Ford, so I got four-wheel disc brakes. There's a lot of advantages to that. So now I got all, you know, low range is low range in this thing, really low. Well, you know what? That was just, you made it look easy. Well, it was easy, a lot easier than I thought it would be. I mean, well, it's because you have the benchmark, the Wrangler on 33s with balloon tires and lockers. Yeah, I let some of the air out. I'd probably only run 10 pounds or so, but yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, the front would act like it was coming up quite a bit, but I don't think I lost traction at all. Okay, now it's my turn. <laughs> well, <laughs> jump in your cab over semi over there and see if you can climb up that hill. I wish you had lockers. I bet he wishes he had lockers, too. Okay, guys, so I'm a little bit nervous. I'm top heavy, and uh, I don't have big tires. I do have low range, which I think will help me quite a lot. So this is my first true obstacle in this thing. So I'm going to take it slowly and gently. Lights on. I'm going to... Gently walk it up. Come on, Buhanka, you can do this. Okie dokie. 
I lost traction. I don't think I, I, I don't have lockers. This is a design of a military four-wheel drive van from 1965. That's why it looks old. And it's sold in Russia and several other countries in Asia around the world. Yes. This color in Russia is called White Knights. Because oh. in Siberia, above Arctic Circle, you know, these vans are working, hard-working vans. And this is a new color. It does look like cement with Toyota. They will go through snow and everything, huh? They will. So well, what size of an engine is this? It's is actually it a mid-engine. It's a 2.7 liter straight four gas engine mm -hmm. and it's fuel injected. Oh, cool. Because <laughs> of course it used to be carbureted and it's a four speed manual. Oh, is this where the blower goes or what's this for? No, this is for the additional uh, radiator. And I, oh. I think, yeah, so, and this, this, this is my nose. Okay. So the hinges, of course, are steel. This is steel. This is plastic. You can see right there. Wow. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's amazing. And it's fuel injected. Yeah. Wow. So, Mr. Truck, check this out. I'm rolling on these 15-inch steelies. It's a 31-inch tall tire by 10 and a half. And this tire, it's really aggressive but it's also made in Russia. Cool. Yeah. These are manual hubs, check it out. So I can be in two wheel drive, put it in four wheel drive, and I have a dual lever transfer case. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so it's high and low and off and on, or what does it do? Uh, it's high and low, neutral, and also engaging the front shaft and disengaging the front shaft. Let me show you my beautiful engine. Oh, look at this. Holy cow. So this is my fuel injected beauty, and it's really warm. You know, if this was Siberia, you could really warm up quite nicely in here. Wow, that's awesome. So have you ever seen anything, this van, like, in real life before? No. No, I'm not sure we were allowed to see these. <laughs> okay. Slowly back down. Please no tipping. Please no tipping. Okay. I'm gonna take a slightly different line. Oh. Huh. So I'm gonna back down just easily, nice and easy. Oh, sh oh, sh I'm sorry. Uh, that was not a family-friendly comment. I really apologize. Would going faster help? Because you were doing yeah. bouncing. Yeah. So I think I need a little bit of momentum. Right. Uh, what happened was I was doing really well. I thought. Yeah. But when I lost traction on one side and the wheel, I didn't have any lockers. Yeah, right. So if I hit it with some momentum, I should be able to do something. Yeah, because you'll be getting over that last big bump and you should be okay as soon as you get okay. over that big bump. Okay, I'm ready. momentum and I took a slightly left line to the left and I was able to do it it's a little bit bumpy but my low gearing was key it was just so helpful to get the extra oomph I needed from this engine that makes maybe 76 horsepower when it was new actually it wasn't that bad guys just a little bit of momentum and this little buhanka just scampers like a goat it is bumpy, and the steering wheel bucks, but it's good. Yeah, you did really good. And you notice the track's going up it? You never stop spinning. You're spinning the whole time. <laughs> never once did you get a good bite where you're just kind of roaming around. It took momentum. Well, Mr. Truck, that was something else, climbing yes, the mountain. Yes, that was fun. And foggy makes it a little spooky because you don't know where the cliff is, you don't know what the side of the mountain is. Yeah, that was fun. So now, how about this? I really want to experience your Jeep, but I want you to drive, and then we can split, switch, and then you jump in as a passenger in my van. You, you say you're going to drive my Jeep? No. Oh, good, because that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> okay. Okay, can I jump in? Yes, jump on in, man. we got plenty of room. The water's warm. Hi, yo! 
save it away. Let's go. Hey. How much horsepower do you think you have? Oh, a lot. A lot? Well, whatever. So that's your second liters. gear right there? Yeah, and there's third, see? I'm barely moving in third. Wow, wow, you're really low geared. I am. Well, that's only 410, though. And here it's surging. Yeah. I need a throttle because when I'm hitting these bumps, it makes my foot bump. Yes. If I had a throttle, that would be so much smoother. So what do you mean you need the throttle? Like adjustment to it or what? Yeah, we pull the throttle halfway out for half speed. Okay. And then you don't you don't have your foot on the foot feet. I got gotcha. you. So eliminating that is it helps get rid of the surge. Well, what if you go to fourth gear? What what happens then? Well, see, that's why I'm low range. Oh wow! Yeah. It's a see, little bit of a bucking bronco. Yes. Well, dude, this is what makes a Jeep classic. You know, oh, it's yeah. a classic off-roader. It was born in World War II, obviously, right? Right. It just does things that you thought were not possible, and then well, they can do it. Surprise. Okay, so I'll only have two or three of my gauges work. My battery, my fuel, and my fu uh, oil pressure. Well, that's important. Uh, that's okay. So you ready for this? I'm ready. ready for oh, shoot him. <laughs> So we're still in low range, okay. so which means I can go into second easily. Ooh, I'm gonna hit my roof. Well, this is faster than my Jeep is in second. Oh, really? Oh, you're really going fast, yeah. This would be so, like fourth or fifth. Right? So I think uh, probably not a gear as low as you are. Yeah, well, I'm four tens and I have no idea what you are. No, I have no idea what I am. But this van, you know, it's a little bit bigger than I expected, actually. Yeah, yeah it is, it is. It's actually, it's, there's a lot of room back there, there's a lot of, a lot of potential back there. Yeah. I'm not sure so, I'd want to ride in the front too often, but yeah, I like so the what, why? What, what's your feeling? Because my hip, my thighs are off the ground, it's like on a motorcycle. My legs are touching the floor, and, and there's room for my hand under my thighs, which so, means in 100 miles I'll have to get out and walk around. So here's the thing about the Buhanka van. Oh, this is a roller coaster too. No, it's not a roller coaster. Oh, it's a teeter totter because it's just tipping back. It's porpoising. It's porpoising. No, here's the thing about the Buhanka. Yes. It's, it's made to do work. It's not made for comfort. They okay. don't care about comfort. I know, it looks different. Holy well, cow, they were falling in a hole. Are we going up the side of the mountain? Yes. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go up the side of the mountain. Give me something to do. Oh, 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 oh See, there's the teeter-totter action right there. Oh, holy cow, I see a mountain in front of me <laughs> and a ravine behind me. Holy oh, cow. Oh, jeez, there goes the donuts. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how else to do it. Oh, well, there's a tree. Okay, they hit oh. that tree. <laughs> we lost. We almost lost the camera. Oh yeah, that that's forgot about the camera. Well, there you go. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Truck, welcome back to the Bohanka. <laughs> I am in the back of the Tonko, whatever this thing called. It's tonka? not a it's, it's not, not a, a buffalo. It's not a Tatonka. Okay. Uh, how's your donut doing? Well, it's kind of smashed, but it's okay. We kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed how much room there's back here. And you got to look like five feet between the fender wheels, which means you can haul a lot of plywood in this thing. You know, I was gonna build it out. I was gonna maybe build it out. Maybe a folding bed on this side. Maybe shelves and toolboxes on that side. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, and put the porta potty back in the corner. Okay. That'd be cool. So. Here's what I learned today. Okay. The Buhanka is good off-road. Uh -huh. The Jeep is better. Uh -huh. But uh, I think the way this Buhanka is, I don't want to change a lot of it mechanically because it's got good clearance, good tires. With a little bit of momentum, it can actually climb Cliffhanger 1.0. And also we can sit here and eat. Yeah, you can put a bed in here, you can put bunk beds in here. You can do all kinds of stuff with this. This is pretty cool, but yeah, I don't know, it'd be nice if you could get some kind of a limited slip or a locker. I don't think they make them for that banjo we're in or what. And your Jeep just made it look boring. I know, it's amazing how good that Jeep well, is. That's what locker does for you. You know, I would just wish, I now know why they went to coils eventually because these, these leaves just ride too rough, but, and you need more wheel travel, but the lift, I I cleared everything and that's that's the secret to it, it's the lockers. But, All right, so let's cheers to a successful uh, off-road trip. Cool. And we'll see you at mrtruck.com. Yes. tfltruck.com and mrtrailer.com. Yes, indeed. We'll have more fun on the bayou.